the next one of these videos on player base uh, is uh, myself, GR, responding to a comment by uh, Sabrina and Wolf or Wolf. Uh, Sabrina uh, was asking, how do you suggest to get through comment if you don't have your attacks memorized? Which is a very key, is actually a very key point. Um, are you suggesting that other ways the DM can support this exercise? And Wolf or Wolf says, if you don't want handing your sheet to the DM, they can calculate the numbers. And this is, in fact, the way Arneson used to play. Dave Arneson is arguably the Paul McCartney of D&D, &D, if you think of Guy Gax as John Lennon and um, Wesley and Perrin as uh, Ringo and the fancy guitar guy. That <laughs> pissed a lot of people off just now. <laughs> the intersectionality, people getting really upset about Beatles um, in jokes and, uh, or out jokes. And this video is probably pretty slim. Uh, the point is, though, Arneson would play like this. He would, he, he, the character sheets, they were his. He, all the dice was his. You would just tell him what you imagined your character doing in the world, and he would work it out and tell you the results. So you never got stuck just looking at the character sheet. But uh, there's an issue with this, too, because especially if you're a new DM, finding, ca catching all those numbers can be a real mugs game. And the reason for that is because you don't need to calculate the numbers. The amount of hit points uh, an enemy has is three rounds of combat. They get hit three times, and that was their hit points. This uh, is a brilliant idea, and I've used it, and it comes from Chad from the Fear the Boot podcast, which is a great podcast about DMing and GMing. It's been running since you know the beginning of uh, the internet, practically, uh, out of St. Louis. And I have used this ever since I heard it, which was like April of 2020. And it's, it's brilliant, because first of all, any longer than that, and the fight just drags on. Because if you have two or three people at the table, and even if they know what they're doing, and they, they've got their stuff ready, it takes a while to get to a round of combat. Three rounds of combat is plenty, you know? Like, that's a two-course meal of, like, heavy dishes. Like, people don't really want to sit around for much more than that. It's not like combat in a square software game where it cycles really quickly, or, you know, in a Souls game. Like, it's work it's 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 laborious and you know it's like taking notes in a zoom meeting people don't really want to go through that for very long so more than three rounds of combat you need to have a real reason and an engagement beyond just ah oh, you're fighting the guy but you know the other thing is that one of the reasons that Arneson would play like this is because the player's job is to imagine how they would act in the world and the dungeon master, the game master's job is to m make that a reality. And the rules give a set of phenomenological constants, basically, that give you a sort of a, a haptic feedback. You know, like the shaking on a... The rules in a role-playing game are like, the, like the, sh the rumble in a joystick. The purpose of the rules is to make the playing of the game feel real. It's not a war game. And it comes out of war games, for sure. And you know, dungeon writing and mega dungeons has a, it, it, a lot of war game tile moving type activity to it. But that's still not a role playing game. That's a that's a part of role playing games. But yeah, like you know, nobody is coming to the table looking to do that. Not playing 5th edition, because all those people are older than 35, and they all have, like, $20,000 worth of old material. And if they're watching this channel, hey, what's up? I'm, invite me to your game. I'm happy to run something out of the white box. But that's not what people are coming to the internet to look for. Nobody's doing that. Nobody's playing D&D and going, oh, man, I really want this to be a more tactical award game. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> you can... You can download, you can download Final Fantasy Tactics or Front Mission or Warhammer or like there's literally multi-billion-dollar industries that do all that work for you, and it's much more engaging. You don't need that from something where all the math has to be done in pencil. 
It's not necessary, and it's not that much fun. It's just not. And I will stand by that. And I like tactical role-playing games a lot. I've, oh, I can't talk about that on camera, but like I've made some autistic choices about tactical role-playing games. It's not like I don't like them, but that's not what this is for. You know, 75% of the populace of people who play role-playing games, particularly, well, D&D, are under 35. You know what that means? That means that they've never had to work with Thacko. They've never had to figure out negative armor class. They've never had to get into the type of like rules, like 95 treatises, Martin Luther type schisms that the 80s and 90s and the early 2000s were fraught with. I mean, the way that people used to discuss like D&D in particular, but role playing games in general, it was akin to the Protestant Reformation. It, with the same fervor and also the same bewilderment looking in hindsight. You know, people took the verisimilitude and the realness of the rules very seriously, but not because it's a combat game, because the rules simulate a reality and they allow you to experience what Tolkien calls the secondary world in a way that feels like the cause and effect of our reality. And that's the point. And getting stuck on the character sheet is going to draw you away from that. You don't, that's not going to help you. What you're looking for, whether you know it or not, why you're playing D&D as opposed to just Final Fantasy Tactics or, you know, painting a bunch of minis and, you know, running Age of Sigmar, is because being immersed in a world that is fantastical but still believable has a palpable draw and you're not going to get that by staring at your keychain for 20 minutes every time a round of combat comes around you need two weapons that's it i guarantee you you get two weapons that you like using in the and you like using them because you feel like you're using them in the world you don't actually have a sword in your hand and last i checked no one can actually catch magic missile or cast magic missile oh mm, mm, sorry my mouth's dry because I'm so emphatic about this. Anyway, <laughs> let me know what you think. Uh, see you later, Playbase. Sure.